just before the race, I was just sat there thinking, actually, we have literally got the strongest team. So I'm thinking, flipping heck, this is pressure. <laughs> when I first did mine 10 years ago, it was kind of a bit of fun. Now it's Olympic medal and an Olympic medal is Olympic medal. I'm not just sitting at home looking at my medals every single day like, oh, these are so good. I think it's, I don't really know how I'm supposed to feel. Every now and then I, I have my, uh, my medals on my mantelpiece and I take a look at them and I'm like, geez, that's pretty cool. Bronze in London, silver in Rio, gold in Tokyo, hopefully more to come in Paris. Olympics, not quite completed it yet, mate. Welcome to a special edition of the podcast produced on behalf of British Triathlon where we literally have four Olympic champions with us. Hi, I'm Jess Lermont. I'm Johnny Brownlee. I'm George Taylor Brown. Hi, I'm Alex Yi. I'm a British triathlete. Mixed team relay gold medalist. From the Tokyo 2020 or 2021 Olympic Games. Coming up, in their own words, the Fab Four from British Triathlon will talk us through their history-making moment in Tokyo. We ask who could be back for Paris in 2024. And with the Leeds World Triathlon Championship Series and the Birmingham Commonwealths to come this summer, why the mixed team relay means so much to so many people. A lot of people spoke to you about it than I ever imagined, you know, like just random people that probably didn't watch triathlon just seemed to love it, didn't they? And I think it, I was quite shocked at how much coverage it got. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant event. You know, it's short, it's fast, it's uh, male and female competing on the same stage in, in a team. So for me, it's, it's what sport's all about. I just really enjoy the relay and it's constantly changing and so many different things can happen and it's just quite exciting to watch. I receive more excited messages after the, the mixed relay about the format and the fact it was male and female and people were just super excited to watch it. July 31st, 2021, the delayed 2020 Tokyo Olympics and British triathletes won gold in the first ever mixed relay. It was a decisive victory for Great Britain, with the USA second and France third, in a time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 41 seconds. This is their story. Oh God, I can't remember. Gee, we were, we were in separate rooms, were we? Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I remember that morning being crazy early. I think you wake up at 2.45 or something silly like that. Um yeah, I remember it being extremely early. It almost felt like when you wake up for a flight. Yeah, so we got up early and we actually went, didn't we, and had breakfast together as a... Um, not, was Johnny there and Alex there? Yeah, I think we were all there. It's nice to, to go back and relive some of those memories, to honest, yeah. But it was an early start. We were too early to have breakfast um, in the hotel. So went to a coach's room where they had a little camping stove where I had some porridge um, I was feeling a bit nervous about the mixed team relay, but uh, I was more excited than anything else. I think for me, it was an opportunity and I really, really realised that. And at this point in time, I thought it was going to be my final Olympic race. I thought that would be it. Um, so I was nervous, but at the same time, I was excited. Did you get up and do a turbo in the room? Probably the athlete that I am. <laughs> yeah. The pressure's down to me, isn't it, with the with the timings? Because I'm first leg, I have to organise when we all go down. Because obviously, if I want to go down at a certain time, the whole team's got to come. Uh, we were probably one of the first teams down there, weren't we? Psyching yep. everyone out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, being last leg, my race actually starts one hour 15 after Jess's. So... I was in the warm-up area trying to keep cool. I think that day was really hot and we had to make sure we were staying in the right core temperature and stuff like that. So so for us, we were trying to stay as engaged as we could in the race, but also focus on what we were doing. So we were ready to go when it was our time. My role in the team was leg two. And uh, firstly, I was going for my warm-up process at the same time as watching Jess. You know, you're trying to warm up, you're trying to do the, the best warm you can because for us being endurance athletes, Getting ready for a 20 minute race um, is, is hard, you know, we're not normally used to that. So I want it to be warmed up, ready to go. So I'm trying to go for my warm up at the same time as watching Jess and probably not doing my warm up as well as should have been. You know, asking coaches what's going on, is she ahead? Uh, but to be honest with you, um, Jess started perfectly. As soon as I got out of the water first, I'll have been 
gunning it for the for the transition and I think we must have had a bit of a gap because it kind of helps you if you get a bit of a gap out of the swim it kind of helps you relax in transition because obviously if you're at the front it's kind of you feel like you've got more time to play with uh, so luckily I had a bit of a, a gap and then I could get my helmet on pretty quick and swiftly and once I'm on the bike yeah then it's just pressure pressure to try and split the field up I guess because although it's not like hilly or anything or you know it was quite a a short circuit it's, there's a few corners and once you get the gaps it's very difficult to close it for me i was watching it on a little iphone whilst i was warming up um you could see them fly past every now and then but that doesn't give you kind of a good enough uh, idea of what's going on so it's bizarre that the all the stuff's happening outside but you're actually inside kind of focusing on on the race through a for a little iphone like probably people are doing all over the world the way the race was unfolding it gave me a great deal of excitement and, and anticipation, but also, yeah, a great deal of nerves and I really wanted to do the team justice. Basically, just don't look back. <laughs> You're literally dying and all you're doing is looking for that hand and you smack it and then you you couldn't care less for that moment in time because you just collapsed on the floor and it's not till you come round. I, I was able to chat to G then because obviously she, w- she was going off quite a bit later. I can picture Jess running down the kind of finishing straight to the handover and I just thought right this is it your last Olympic experience make sure you give it everything and be calm uh got in the water thought right the swim no one's gonna drop me on the swim but it feels fast enough and I got on the bike and I, I was like right here's my time to really push this race on and then got onto the run and it, and it was a two lap run I my transition was absolutely perfect I um probably had one of the best runs of my career uh and I, I didn't want that race to end because I was feeling so good to answer, yeah, and I was, I was building the lead. For me, I think I was in, like, the holding pen sort of area um, and I knew that Johnny had the gap, so I was really relaxed then because I thought, well, this is good because we've got a bit of a gap and so I don't have to panic with things like Jess said, like transitions. If you've got that little extra time, you can just take more time thinking about those small things that can actually make quite a big difference because if you're... If you're struggling for time and you're all rushed and panicking around, you get everything wrong in transition and then the race can be over. So I was like, okay, I'll just run nice and steady into the water because there was quite a ramp down and a lot of people were slipping on that. So I knew that I needed to be careful into that run in. I was really relaxed, but then Johnny touched my hand and really, really aggressively was like, go, 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 go. Uh, Yeah, I'm not normally a kind of fist pumping, shouting kind of person. Uh, um, but I just remember running down the finishing straight, giving it everything. And then I, I don't know why, but I thought Georgia uh, would benefit from a, a bit of encouragement. Uh, I don't know if that's the, uh, um, the adrenaline or the whole experience, but yeah, I basically was sprinting down the finish with about, a, when I got within two seconds of Georgia, I just shouted, come on, Georgia, give it everything. I was like, oh my God, oh my <laughs> God, he's expecting so much of me now. So then I thought, oh God, Johnny really wants this. So that I was very, very focused then. Um, but I still was very lucky in that I had time, but I did, once I dived into the water, I just went for it from the start because I thought if I can really, really go for it for the first 100 metres, I might die, but hopefully I've got a little bit of a a gap extended there. Um, But then on the bike, Taylor Nib brought me back in a bit, um, which I I assume that was going to happen anyway. Um, I was definitely very conscious of, of, yeah, getting a puncture again. Um, I think I was just a little bit traumatised and also the fact that then it's for the team. So if I get a puncture, that's, well, Alex probably wouldn't even start his leg. But yeah, I just, I tried to go as hard as I could for the first lap and I think I kind of did that and then blew up a little bit. Um, But it worked out in the end, I guess. As Georgia was coming in, she was just trying to focus on getting everything out of herself. I don't think we had too much dialogue between each other. I think this is such a split second moment that I was just trying to focus on what I was going to do. And for us, that changeover was short but sweet as I, hopefully it's meant to be. Um, I talked to Alex a little bit because I kind of took the role as a, of a senior member of the team. I know from experience uh, how hard it is taking over in his position because... When you take over in first place, um, if you win, everyone says, well done. You, know, you, you took over in first place, so you, you should have won. But you are there to get shot at. You're there to, uh, people want to beat you, want to catch you up. You can still make lots of mistakes. So Alex, 
um, I knew that he would feel the pressure. I was out 20 seconds ahead, so I, I had to have a bit of management of my effort. I think I could have easily got out straight away and just absolutely blew my doors off and and risk not being caught at all and then absolutely exploding at the end. But So for me, I wanted to manage my effort, swim as effectively as I could at a low, low enough intensity, but hard enough that I maintained a, a decent pace. And, and then, yeah, onto the bike, I did a similar thing. I remember, yeah, just knowing that I was going to be caught, but then anticipating the speed Vincent Louis was coming at um, was not something I was expecting. So it was different for me because I'd never been in that position where I really had to think about managing my effort at different times. But then for that first K of the run, I really went hell for leather and just went for it to establish that gap. And uh, that second lap was really, really tough. About halfway through that lap, I kind of realised that we were in a yeah really strong position. And yeah, it was a pretty amazing feeling kind of coming coming round and enjoying the, those last few hundred metres. Do you remember Jess sort of turning to me and when Alex was going in to do that last lap on the run and she did use a swear word, but she was like, effing hell, we've, we've won, G, we've won. I was like, well, we haven't yet, but we probably are going to. We were loving it, weren't we, G? Like, him going on to the last lap, we were like, just enjoy it. <laughs> really lame. Yeah, you did. You were like, don't worry, just take it all in now, Alex. Yeah. We've won this. Because <laughs> I thought he needs to kind of just remember that and take it all in, you know, like that last lap is... Not that he's gonna, you know, he's he's obviously not gonna be like cheering to none of the fans that were there, but um, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I just wanted him to to try and remember it, um, and relax a bit and enjoy it. He probably didn't. They were the three best athletes that we could have physically put in in those legs on that day. They were incredible, and uh, there was a real team camaraderie about about our team that day, and and it all clicked and it was amazing well there's like two athletes areas we were in our own little section and we had quite a little a, a nice view of the big screen didn't we and just all in there with the, some of the staff watching loving it yeah I, th- I think when it came down to the last two laps of the run that's when we moved down to actually on the race course side um so we could be right close to alex and sort of cheer for him from there so he could see us there's a strange situation there. Um, we've all got masks on. It's the new, the new normal, isn't it? Alex is running down the finishing straight. My reaction is, you know, what do we do? Do we go and hug him? We don't want to cross the finish line before he crosses the finish line, get us all disqualified, then it's all a waste of time. So there's this weird moment then of uh, what do we do? So we let him cross the finish line, jumped on him. Um, I don't think he was too pleased with that because he was pretty tired. Just said to you, didn't we? Well done, ye. Yeah. He, he couldn't care less. <laughs> At that time, because there, there was well, no, he could. Yeah. He w- there was no words from him. He was so. I think he was. He was so emotional. He looked like he was almost crying, but he was so knackered. Like he, yeah. he didn't really say anything at all <laughs> until like God, dramatic. Alex, get up. This is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's a good suffering though. At that point, I think. Yeah, I'd I'd given up see everything, but uh, it was for the greatest reward of all. So I think um, that that's a little price to pay for for that amazing feeling, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. That was an absolute amazing feeling for me to finally um, get that Olympic gold medal. Um, but for me, one of the actual kind of major moments uh, was I saw my split times. It gave me a kind of ruffled up bit of paper that uh, you know probably been scrunched up, and I'd had the fastest split overall and the fastest run. And at that point, that actually meant in some ways more to me than that gold medal because I've kind of doubted myself a, a lot over the last few years. And uh, then my whole kind of experience changed. And I, I kind of said to myself, wow, well, Paris is only three years ago. You know, maybe you can still do it. So literally in the space of half an hour, I'd gone from it being my last Olympic race to look at this scrunched up bit of paper thinking, wow, well, I can do that again. You do kind of want to just move on and actually celebrate as not just the four of us in the immediate team but it's more about being with the bigger team around us and and being with the staff in British Triathlon you want to be able to see them and celebrate and congratulate them as well and it was so nice when we were on the podium and we could see all the staff in the grandstand and they were just so proud and they were all having a big picture together with us in the background um, and that for me is something that I'll I'll never forget because they were just so proud and it was obviously such a big moment for 
them that were there and also for British triathlon in general. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll always remember that. There's a team and then there's the team, if that makes sense. I think uh, we're, we're the ones that are lucky enough to do the, the really fun bit and the exciting bit, but there's a whole support staff that were there. For us, we, we perform at kind of the, the highest level in the Olympic sport, but they, they perform at the highest level in what in their profession as well. One thing I remember is we went to go put our tracksuits on, didn't we? I didn't have any knickers. I didn't have a <laughs> didn't. bra. And so I went on the podium. You'd brought extra knickers, so I was wearing yours. You had everything sorted because you'd obviously been through it the day before. So you had makeup, you had pegs to make your suit smaller and they were like me with like a massive big tracksuit on my hair everywhere completely flustered and unprepared and you were like I don't know just a regular no it's just another podium um yeah because (laughs) you wouldn't pack anything because she was like no I don't want to preempt anything I'd rather not I don't even want to take my tracksuit I think that's just (laughs) bad luck we shouldn't be doing that I remember telling myself as you you gotta sing the national anthem and almost feeling like a little bit scared to do it until uh, the others did as well. And that was a yeah, really nice feeling just to, although I've got an awful voice, it was nice to just be proud and achieve something amazing. I'm more than happy to say I've, well, I've kind of lied, um, misled, well, misled myself, lied to myself more than anything to honestly do. I genuinely always thought that Tokyo um, would be it. Uh, and I really, really mean that. Uh, but the result um, in the mixed team relay, changed that massively and I also learned that that's the racing that I really enjoy and with some of the changes I made over the last few years with um, nutrition, different ways of training, um, they didn't have quite the time to show in Tokyo and I can if I get things right then I can really show them in Paris. Great to have all four back together again telling their story especially Johnny joining from his training camp in Lanzarote. So Great Britain claimed another famous triathlon gold medal, the first ever in the mixed relay. We were excited about it before Tokyo, but it's now become an event that has captured the imagination of the public. A unique opportunity for women and men to race together across the same distances. So for the first time in its sixth year, the Leeds World Triathlon Championship Series at Roundhay Park will see a mixed team relay competition as well as the famous individual races. Leeds is always one of the best on the circuit and the crowds get behind it. And to be fair, like even when it was COVID and it was like one of the first races afterwards and there was only a certain amount of people there, even that was deafening. Um, So I can't wait to have it at round here, which is a really nice little circuit. Um, And obviously it's shorter, so... Like I said to my sister, my nephew will come because <laughs> instead of having to endure two hours, it's it's just a cheeky hour. Um, and then also you've got the added bonus of the mixed team relay. So it's perfect for kids as well to come and watch. And I just, I think it'll be a great event. And um, obviously it'll be hot because it literally has been quite warm nearly most of the World Series in Leeds because, <laughs> you know, it's guaranteed great weather in Leeds. <laughs> I'm looking forward to racing in Birmingham and Leeds. I think it could be a great course in Leeds in Roundley Park. Um, up and down the hills, it'd be perfect for a mixed team relay. So hopefully lots of people come watch. Um, it, it is great to watch live because there's so much going on. It'll be short loops on the bike, short loops on the swim and the run. So you, there'll be people going past you all the time. You know, it's not like the Tour de France where you stand on the side of the, uh, uh, stand on the road, side of the road and they whiz past you once. You know, there's a lot going on. So hopefully lots of people come watch and come and support it. Leeds this year was amazing. It was the first time we could have any sort of crowd for almost two years. And for it to be people who are friends and family and people I'd gone to university with and, and stuff like that, I think was incredibly special. And for me, I'll for sure be back there. And I'd love to be part of that, that relay team. If, if there's the opportunity, it's going to be really exciting. For the mixed team relay, a change of order. We will now go male, female, male, female. So you won't have the chance to be on the last leg if you're back in the team next time around. But just your general thoughts on, on that little alteration? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm happy or sad about the fact that I'm not last leg anymore. Um, but yeah, I guess the success of last year, I think it's it's really opened our eyes to what's, what's uh, achievable. And I think, I'd, I'd like to think we're led, well, we're led by amazing women in, in British triathlon. So for us to, to have a, a woman on last leg, I think is only a good thing for us. And 
Johnny and I and the future athletes will all obviously try and do our part. Yeah, hopefully it's it's just going to bring more excitement and more unpredictability to the racing. It is a great idea to mix it up a little bit and be able to finish with a girl this time round at the Games because Alex obviously brought it up home for us in Tokyo and he got quite a lot of attention for that. So I think it'll be nice to then draw the attention onto the women and, and just see how that works. And I think it... Yeah, it will be really, really interesting. And I don't think it'll change much for us because we are quite strong across the board. Um, But it might put other countries in the race for longer. Like the Norwegians, they have really strong guys, but not strong women. So if they can now be in the race from the start, they're a massive threat. I'm proud to be part of a sport in triathlon. A male and female distance is the same. Race opportunities the same, prize money is the same, a mixed team relay kind of shows all of that. Um, there we compete on the the same courses as a team and race together, so it's absolutely brilliant. Paris must be in your thoughts retaining the title and and trying to get there individually again as well and and back on that podium. What's your thoughts ahead of that qualification process for the next games? Yeah, it's amazing how quickly it comes round. Um, you know, this time, obviously, with a year less, it's come round even quicker. And the Olympic kind of campaign does start already. Already, We've heard that the, the winning team of the mixed team real event in Montreal will get an automatic Olympic spot. And ideally, you, you want that Olympic spot sewn up very early on. And it means you can focus on, other, on, on getting ready for that Olympics then, rather than going around the world and qualifying. I mean, the qualification process, it's in the back of your mind, you know, that you have to achieve certain things to be able to stand a chance in qualifying. But it's not something that you constantly think about because you just you just race no matter what you just you, you're racing anyway. So you're just there to, to do the job. You're not constantly thinking about, oh, my God, I need to get this position to have this many points and then I'll be ranked this position in the, the qualification. So, um, yeah, I mean, you do think about it. And obviously, I would like to stand a chance in going to Paris. But it just, yeah, it depends how my body will hold out um, for the next two years. But hopefully, I'll I'll get there. Um, we'll see. There's just so much competition. You're talking like your retirement um, age. <laughs> this, I am. I feel like I'm going to get out of bed in the morning. You're only a bed. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine well there's just so many like there's so many of us now and so many young girls coming through it's it's I'm, i don't know i'm on edge all the time um but yeah i just gotta look after myself and um stay focused and yeah i think i'll i'll aim for paris um and then see what happens after that and jess you just taking Paris in your sights or year by year? What's the approach for you? <laughs> well, even before Tokyo, I didn't even think I was going to Olympics until literally just before, as in before we got selected. So um, year by year, even if, you know, I, my age was, you know, if I were G's age, that's the way my mind works, sadly. It's very um She year lives in year. the moment. Yeah, very much. Oh, I'm a wild one. For us, I think it's going to be really important to set off on the right foot this year and, and maximise our potential and make sure we have those free men and free women and then also qualify our mixed relay team nice and early as well. Alongside the elite athletes in Leeds on June 11th and 12th, there will also be a mass participation swim, bike and run events for anyone of all levels and experiences. There's also a relay option, not officially a mixed relay, but you can team up with two people to complete the triathlon together by taking a discipline each. Entries for the World Triathlon Championship Series Leeds are now open. Check out leeds.triathlon.org for more details. That's it for this podcast. Thanks again to the Fab Four of Jess, Johnny, Georgia and Alex. The mixed team relay was one of the highlights of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games and we can't wait for more this summer. Triathlon.